Why are those cells that you discover in breast milk are pluripotent stem cells? Because they have two main properties. They're able to replicate themselves, in other words, make copies of themselves, but they can also differentiate into many different cell types of the three germinal layers. They can become not only breast cells, but also bone cells, neural cells, and other types of cells, such as heart cells and liver cells. These are the main properties of these cells that make them pluripotent. You said that a baby is getting between 10,000 and 13 million cells um, and that um, they are going into the baby's body. Where are they going? In uh, our mouse study that we've recently completed, we showed that these cells go into the blood circulation and from there they migrate into different organs. And these organs include uh, not only organs such as the liver, pancreas, spleen, kidneys, but also the brain. Uh, and therefore they may provide important developmental benefits. We showed that they go to these organs, they integrate and they become functional cells. Are they remaining there for a longer time or are they f mm, disappearing after two weeks? No, they do not disappear. They stay there and it looks like they stay there for life because we also investigated adult mice after breastfeeding stopped and into the adulthood of these um, mice and we found that the stem cells were present in the different organs even in adulthood. Then you spoke about an effect that um, these stem cells could also have a reverse effect on the mother and you spoke about for instance um, breast cancer. Can you quickly elaborate on that? Mm -hmm. uh, we know from previous studies that breastfeeding and breast milk is not just good for the baby but also for the mother and there are many important reasons why that's the case but in this particular um, presentation I showed that uh, the stem cells in the milk which reflect the stem cells in the mother's breast uh, reduce over time during breastfeeding and therefore later on in lactation the mother's breast has fewer stem cells than early on in lactation. They are still there, they have the same properties but they are probably fewer in numbers and therefore this may be associated with the reduced cancer risk that we see in women that has, have breastfed for longer periods. Um. You spoke about the value of stem cells in medicine in general. Could you quickly tell us um, why and some examples where? The stem cells that we see in breast milk are very unique. They're not embryonic stem cells. They're not like any other of stem cells that we have examined. They're very unique in themselves, but they seem to have properties similar to embryonic stem cells and properties similar to other types of stem cells because they can turn into so many different cell types. Therefore, we showed that they are able to do that not only in the culture disc but also in vivo, in the body. And for this reason, they have a great potential to be used in medicine. Uh, in medicine in terms of uh, babies that have diseases but also in terms of adults that have diseases and that is definitely something we're interested in and we are investigating and I hope in the future we will learn more about these stem cells and how they can prove to be useful not only for the breastfeed baby and also for the mother herself but also for other people. Now we had heard a lot about stem cells, new um, information that you gave uh, in this conference, <clears throat> but there was another aspect that was absolutely new to me and many of our audiences probably, that uh, you said in um, human milk we have microRNAs. Now for us, could you quickly explain what is a microRNA and why is that a spectacular finding? MicroRNAs are small RNA molecules that are able to control genes, the function of our genes. And we know that they are found in uh, our uh, food sources. They are found in plant food that we eat, in animal food, they're pretty much everywhere. And recent studies in the last few years have shown that microRNAs are found in human milk as well. And in my lab, uh, a project done by my student has shown that these uh, microRNAs are actually 
present in very large numbers in breast milk. They are present in thousands, in the thousands. And we found that many of them are very specific to the breast milk. They're found nowhere else, just in the milk and in the mother's breast. And we know that these microRNAs can control thousands of genes. Therefore, a breastfeed baby ingests breast milk that contains stem cells, that contains microRNAs, and potentially other things that we haven't yet discovered that may provide very important and significant benefits for that baby. So I'm looking forward to the research in the next few years, in the next few decades, that will reveal new novel aspects about breast milk feeding and about breastfeeding and how that can be optimized, uh, for example, for preterm babies. So I can only say we are looking forward to further research results. Thank you very much.